I think what we see more and more, teachers, they do the common goals in order to prepare for the test. They will always do that. But they also know that the real learning is a much more holistic process. It's an integrated process. Exactly. And that has to do with, with learning skills, with metacognitive skills like awareness, um, also strategic thinking, what parents like if you make it clear to the parents what it means. Because learning is not the goal of life, you see. I, I've seen so many interesting educational processes, but they led to decline the, the community because the talented students, they went out, they were so successful, they were parachuted to the bigger cities or to different uh, industries. So the communities, they even suffered from the better learning, I think. So if you take a more inclusive point of view and go into the dialogue with, with parents and the school, you will find a new formula. That's it. So, so if I try to sum it up, not being involved in education at all, so what Pete is saying that there are three that the parents are the main customers, uh, the the teachers are the the intermediaries. The, no, they are the providers. Providers, yeah. Providers. And the students, students yeah, are the, 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 the and, and and that you ha you really have to focus, and also you have to focus on the on the management boards of the school that they really get involved and not get in their way, because you want you provide you don't replace them, you provide additional tools for them. Exactly. Yeah. That's the main 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 point. Yeah. It is a it is a it is a win win. What you just what you say, Peter? Uh, it is a win-win that schools should sort of feel they get something uh, free. Additionally, <coughs> it, it comes from heaven. See, when and, when it when you give something free, yeah, that is also when it loses its importance. That's also oh, another okay. problem. Okay, but because no, we it, gave this free yes, to the school, of, of course. Well, you might you might ask a small fee to the school, but I can assure you that for the first stage this is not the best one i would for the first stage i would say um Give it for free. to survive as a school to to save your reputation to get a good uh, well future uh, you need to convince the parents that you do the essential learning it's not only for the certificate it's also for the start of the of the students lifelong learning um, so um, you have to remember, you have to remember, Pete. This yeah. is not about like, like college. Right? It's, it's before college. Yeah. It's secondary, yeah? secondary school. Is yeah. this yeah. Second, secondary or even uh, lower than that, so-called middle school. Oh, middle, uh, yeah. So yeah, I see. So students from ten to fifteen is this, or ten to fourteen maybe? Is yeah. This? Yeah, even younger children actually. Yeah. So you, well, what see, we wanted to do was catch them young so that their uh, yeah. mind gets trained towards this learning process right from the beginning. So this is a decisive period for what we call the learning skills. Yes. Study skills. Is this what you have recognized or had, uh, published? I mean, do well, you... Is, which is yeah. a very good argument. It's a, it's a very good age to... Decisive, decisive age to pick up this skill. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's a selling point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Schools. Yeah. yeah. So I agree, Angelique, that uh, asking nothing from the schools, that's, I agree, finally your business will be that, uh, I think my estimation is that parents will be your customers too and the parents they will see the school is necessary and the schools know that their students will become better learners so that's good for the school too and but the parents will feel that their particular uh, supporting of you uh, will be decisive for the children's learning mm -hmm. now, now so, this, this parents here yeah, who are customers um, is there any chance they're willing to pay it we my don't know. Yes. <laughs> my feeling is yes. 
the parents see yeah, i think maybe. there is possibility yeah yes. it has to be tried maybe maybe if you if you introduce a very small like subscription model uh, uh that's then you have immediately contact with parents too like yeah. for a very small amount you know yeah. they, they pay uh, i don't know what is a small amount in but but you yeah, want yeah. have subscription model so that you have direct contact with the parents one one option uh, thank you peter that's a good suggestion but one option i think is that if you talk with uh, with those teachers so are those subject based teachers or are they classroom are they group teachers are they teaching this class all day or are they teaching no. <coughs> not not necessarily all day no no okay so there are but there will be particular teachers who have a good view on the students uh, yes. Who, who, yes. who are most familiar with the background and the and yes. the learning process of the student development process so if you would start uh, just as a tryout to have a meeting with uh, a small group of teachers in in, in different corners uh, if they can estimate which students of their class uh, would be the best candidates for such additional benefit learning 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 events yes uh, that would teach you that would make you clear uh, which teachers have this uh, sharp view or not maybe some are missing it mm -hmm. but i guess uh, of course the remedial teachers they they know more but I, I would focus on the on the average teachers, on the on the on the plenary teachers, uh, and find out what are their attributes they dedicate to the students, uh, which are critical for deciding which students would benefit most from your approach. And I, I know your system still needs to grow to this uh, yeah, learning skill because now it's content driven system right mm. so uh, i would do it at the same time uh, i mean by interviewing for 10 minutes a teacher it is not a waste of time it is just necessary uh, and find out if teachers could be the the scouting of which who of the students uh, would benefit from additional learning skill training or how so, you call it as you call it also maybe pete also maybe pete what they want to learn extra they might they might identify what what kind of skills would be very beneficial yeah we have in holland we had a, we had a trial the so-called leonardo schools for the highly gifted students and it was a failure maybe people know about it because uh, it was very elitist and it was a really commercial approach and it became a kind of segregation in in the school. This is not the good mm -hmm. way to to mm -hmm. early discriminate the student based on talents or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I I personally would not go in enlarging the the learning, but to 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 trigger some learning uh, skills in particular students who don't have the natural talents to make these steps. So, uh, of course, and I published a, a lot that's, that would be for later. I will be happy to send you some of my pub publication. But the main lesson I, I draw is that uh, we have typically, we have the strong students. They learn very good, skilled, quick, agile, whatever. We have the very weak students. And then we have the slow students. And what are the slow students? They have... I found out they don't learn in a linear way. They make circular uh, excursions. And I ask myself, what's the reason that they, that they do it, that they escape from the, chrono from the chronology? And what I found out, uh, with a student in, uh, a PhD student in China, that these students, these slow and deep learners, they have a weaker, shorter memory. That's why they make elaborations. They all the time they connected to what they already know because they forget what they just coming in a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this could be one of the reasons. I don't say it's the ultimate one, but it could be an argumentation why a particular group of students would benefit in particular by supportive actions by you. 
uh, and it's, uh, teachers cannot handle that. They they will not differ. They only differentiate in terms of speed and in terms of uh, well repetitions and whatever, but not in teaching style. So um, well, it may be for the first conversation we already did a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> I no, think. That's good. So, I just. I just wanted to ask you about this metacognitive tools that you were referring to. Yes. Uh, I will send you some. Yeah. Basically, whether we could use it and see how those can be used. Okay. Sure, sure. For additional. Yeah. Have you been uh, acquainted with uh, concept mapping, mind mapping, ideational mapping? You probably yeah. know. Okay? Yeah. Now, yeah. this is typically uh, very accessible. So, there are there are tools like inspiration or and there are also public public sources so um, it is the it's the attempt to make students more uh, aware what's the potential of what they learned before to harvest from prior knowledge mm. and to encourage them to use more intuition than it generally do. Mm -hmm. See, uh, okay, but that that would that would that would I, 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 imply I just, another lecture. But it, uh, I will do it later I, if you. I just want to to come back to one suggestion you made, Pete, and it's just that you said it's it's important to have a, um, a city people who uh, actually ask quality of school the municipality who are, who sort of. Want schools to be good. You said something about it. Public reputation, you mean? Or? No, no. So you said, you said well, we were talking about customers, which by the parents. And, uh, and yeah, he was saying uh, entity uh, which uh, who can who, who, entity which is demanding results from the school. Right. Instead of yeah. parents. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that could be typically it is the municipality. It could be, uh, let's say, sometimes municipalities have special agents who take care of the quality of schools. Now, maybe that's not the right person in, in this case, but there will be other groups. It might be an industry who needs different labor force. Let's say the ICT industry is really uh, craving for uh new talents in terms of uh creative thinking in terms of uh so even they need some autistic coding for the coding phase so uh you might talk to the to the employers to the to the uh local industries or the the people who 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 need the labor force that, that might also be an option so so i see it more as a as a constellation of partnerships that have a relationship and you find your position amongst them and say what would be our synergy to each of them and articulate it for yourself mm. you see actually what, what is your feeling i see you you are hesitating a bit desperate yeah. or what is, no what no is i'm it? not actually hesitating i'm just thinking of uh, Actually, the effort that goes into forging these uh, partnerships, that okay. is humongous. <laughs> because Sorry, what is it, is, it, is, it is huge. Huge, yeah. yeah. Very huge. And okay. to for, even to forge these partnerships, you need some kind of a financial support to actually go ahead and do it. Because just the two of us cannot be going to every place to actually try and see and so well, you see it, it, this is the real this is this makes the difference between you have a workshop now you you develop you have an atelier so you build nice things mm. but uh, there is a different concept of business it's exactly. to start to start with the demands start with the stakeholders start with the trends so you if you mention something that people already see it as a need, you will be too late because already five or 500 have defined it uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So you need to find something that is still latent under the water mm -hmm. and will come up. 
and it means that you need to allow yourself some time and your customer to some time so that it 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 becomes a moment you see no, no one has expected this this virus epidemics uh, so if you now make the solution too late but there were already that made unconsciously some preparation tools for this for this moment so i think you have to take the risk to prepare something that will be clearly a problem and you make a solution for the problem of the day after tomorrow mm -hmm. that is my suggestion mm -hmm. okay, you, want, you want to add something to this what do you what to your mind is sorry what yes, to sorry. your mind is a problem of tomorrow well it is simply that uh, the learning approach that we have now especially in schools is too much delivery oriented is uh, test test oriented so it's not building upon the cognitive development of the students mm -hmm. it is a it is an early colonialistic top-down approach why we want to push students to learn what our ancestors were learning. Mm -hmm. That's a pes pessimistic view, I, I'm uh, charging a bit. But uh, the, the real need is that we find out the, the real learning potential of young people. Mm -hmm. And that's not, re that's not a reproductive learning, it's the learning. I will give you an example. For instance, what we do with problem-based learning. And problem-based learning is very successful. It started from the from the Scandinavian countries like Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland. Uh, and the paradigm is that students, sorry, teachers should stop. They they should not start teaching from the very moment. Mm -hmm. They should elicit students and say, stand still, think in yourself. Who do you want to be finally? Who do you want to change? Who are you at this moment? Who do you want to be? What do you need to change in yourself in terms of ways, uh, ambition, uh, ways of thinking, personality, moral? Uh, and that is the real thing. And before we give them the food, they should be hungry. And what we, what we do in universities now, all over Europe mainly, is we say, we say students in the first year, the freshmen, they are invited to define a small project, but they think it's, it's a valid societal goal. And they should let it grow. And they, they, they will find out they need, to know, they need to know much more what they already know. Mm -hmm. And then they will ask the teacher not to teach them, but to find solutions. On the web, you can find everything. I will say everything. Mm -hmm especially in the in the domains and that's the type of learning that will parents encourage mm -hmm. also teachers will encourage it but teachers are bound to the national regime of test-based uh, learning test-based mm -hmm. outcomes yeah? so that is that is my that's my diagnostic of what we what we will see in a few years yeah feature feature do you want to add something to it because we're coming to an end of this session. Would you, do you have any questions or, or you no, know, the best, best thing is also to let us sink in a bit and maybe uh, speak yeah, with each yeah, other yeah. in a week. No, uh, yeah. So, so I, I, yeah, I got a couple of ideas from his input, from Pete's inputs, and uh, we would like to sort of try to use them in our existing couple of partnerships mm -hmm. where there is potential of some immediate result. Right. So like he, he said in terms of maybe identifying a smaller uh, group of students, but those who are really keen to keen learners. So maybe this idea, I would like to sort of uh, we have to share it with the partner uh, administration the administrator of the partner organization so maybe that will result in some more right. of more of pull right right and right. then we get some results so yeah. maybe work on that specific yeah. area and, but and we'll have to it with sensitivity. yeah we have to handle it in a sensitive manner and also uh, try to get the parents involved yeah yeah 
which is very important uh, uh, thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's now it's in a bootstrapping. We are very early to to make the connections, I think, and that's good because we are flexible mm -hmm. to really tune to the real setting now in the world. Uh, I would find I would give the answer to what Peter was asking to say we have to work on three elements to I think what you just what I was just telling you, I think I, I need to send you some some information through Peter, and then <coughs> it, it is the matter uh, if if and how you perceive the potential of what I call metacognitive tools uh, for creative thinking and creative learning. Uh, how would you make the connection to what you have already now? You have a system. Where will be the link so that it becomes instrumental to be a better mm -hmm. use of your system of the nice content organization? Mm -hmm. That will be, I think, is the first step if you if you feel well there's something in it then we can continue if you don't yeah. feel it we we will choose another direction but it is, this is the first step after that if you say i find the match i, I see a new mechanism coming a new dynamics then you approach some of the teachers around you and you say this is our idea for a future additional learning approach uh, what do you do? You recognize students who would benefit best from it. Mm -hmm. Just as a didactic exploratory, you see, it's it's all free. It's 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 to make the concept from that area, mm -hmm. and then you you would make let's say if the relation with the school is already being built, you give small no yeah you can decide how to do, but you need to find some maybe you visit the parents of the students who were recommended by the teacher and I go in a dialogue by telephone and say, yes, we are doing in an innovative project. Would you be happy that your son or your daughter can, can join that? Would you take the chance? You see, and then you have a very small, maybe five or 10 students where you develop this combination of the tools yeah? and then you make an evaluation, etc. And maybe you find even an additional rationale. Uh, I would not uh, exclude that. So it's really, it's an adventure, but I think it's the only way to uh, to make it. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. I think it has triggered some thought, process. thought processes and you would definitely like to take these small steps. Yeah, okay. and we should be in touch. Thank you. Uh, uh, absolutely. Feel always free to send me email. Uh, I think Peter has your email, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll connect you. Okay. Yeah. I will. So maybe the thing to do is so Pete will send me some material and then I will send it through and then I'll connect the emails together. And then uh, maybe in, in two weeks or something like that, we'll, we'll have another an hour and see where we go from there. Because okay. development, so, you know, you have a starting point. And from there, you, you, you have some ideas and uh, interaction, and you never really know where it goes to. So, exactly. Uh, would, would that be okay for, for Pete, for you? Would it be okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I like it. Wonderful. And I, wish okay. you good, uh, I wish you both. Uh, Thank you so much. And so Thank a good uh, weekend now, short weekend, because already finished. <laughs> and uh, safe, safe weeks before you. Okay. Not to feel in the in the trap of the uh, of the corona, yeah. and then uh, I am very open to uh, for our next conversation. Thank you Thanks. so much, and be safe, all of you too. <laughs> Thank you. Now you I have to the whole thing. I don't know how, but uh, I'll ask else. <laughs> yeah, you just you can <laughs> stop the meeting and just press the yeah, red button. Red button. button. <laughs> okay, I'll try to stop it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very bye -bye. much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.